Beaver Water District supplies drinking water to more than 250,000 people and industries in Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Bentonville, and surrounding areas. These cities then resell the water to surrounding towns and communities. Beaver water plants can produce up to 140 million gallons of drinking water per day. Well, in 1949, I graduated from the University of Arkansas and was working for Steel Canning Company. Steel Canning Company was the biggest water user in the city of Springdale. At that time, the city of Springdale was getting their water from springs and wells. Joe Steele had worked with L. Elma Goodwin on water and sewer problems in Springdale for many years. Well, Congressman Trimble had been instrumental in getting Bull Shoals and Norfolk Lakes in, and it was his dream to get Beaver Lake established. And the idea came up that we could use Beaver Lake for a water supply for the entire region of Northwest Arkansas. Joe Steele called Shelby Ford at the First State Bank and told him to put up his cash, Joe Steele's cash, to get the federal money until the city could work it out. Springdale was in business, and in 1966, shortly after this was completed, it so happened that the other three communities got in a desperate need for water. And as was planned from the beginning, this was a regional situation, and they were allowed to come in on the original setup and lay their transmission lines. The economy in Springdale in Northwest Arkansas cannot exist without an adequate water supply, and there's absolutely no other place to secure this adequate water supply for Northwest Arkansas. Drinking water from a surface supply such as Beaver Lake contains sediment, which is simply dirt that's been washed into the lake from streams that have picked up contaminants after a rainfall event. Other contaminants in the lake might include bacteria or viruses, nutrients, or other things which simply have washed into our water supply. We pick up the water from the lake through an intake structure and pump it approximately two miles through large diameter pipes here to our treatment plant site. Along the way, chlorine is added in the first phase to begin the disinfection process to remove bacteria that's in the water. Once the water reaches our treatment plant site here, we go through several processes which are known simply as coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. Quite honestly, we would not expect the average layperson to understand those terms, which is one of the reasons that we built this model of our water treatment plant facilities here in our LEED certified facility in our administration center. We want the public to know, all of the public, whether it's school children, civic groups, lay people of all types, to understand how we treat water and make it safe for them to drink. But the most important thing we want to communicate to the public is that we have people here 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, to ensure that the water is safe for them to consume. The district has to meet national health-based standards for drinking water. That means we comply with the Safe Drinking Water Act. The purpose of the act is to protect public health by regulating the nation's public drinking water supply. The Safe Drinking Water Act authorizes the United States Environmental Protection Agency to set standards for drinking water in order to protect against contaminants. In Arkansas, the US EPA's requirements for the Safe Drinking Water Act are managed and enforced by the Arkansas Department of Health. To comply with these standards, the district performs extensive water quality testing on our source water at the lake, through various stages of the treatment process to the end product that is pumped from the plant to our customers. At every step, safeguards ensure that all standards are met and that the district is in compliance with the Safe Drinking Water Act. Our laboratory is also certified by the Arkansas Department of Health for running bacteriological analysis on drinking water samples. This is a way that we can be a support to our customer cities 
and another safeguard to ensure that the water is safe. Beaver Water District prepares an annual water quality report each year. You can find this data on our website. Beaver Water District's mission is to provide our customers in Washington and Bend County with a safe, dependable source of water uh, at an economical price. This facility, when we first went into the design, uh, we wanted it to be environmentally friendly. We wanted to, uh, we wanted people to recognize uh, different aspects of it. It was designed under uh, a methodology and a certification program called LEED, L-E-E-D, LEED. Uh, leadership in energy and environmental design. Again, another reason that we developed this facility not only to encourage the public to come to the facility to learn more about drinking water and uh, watershed management, uh, protection of uh, water quality in Beaver Lake and other streams. Uh, it is a very essential and important component of our educational program, both for adult education as well as uh, for children. I would wholeheartedly recommend the Beaver Water District's K-12 educational program for any school. This is a wonderful experience and I hope we get to come back again this year. It was just a very, very lovely field trip that I will never forget and I recommend it to everyone. At the district, we practice the multi-barrier approach to water treatment. That means we want to put as many barriers as we can between any source of contamination and your water. Our source of water is Beaver Lake, so we want to keep Beaver Lake as clean as we can to reduce the chance of contamination. Source water protection involves several things, including characterizing the watershed, identifying potential sources of contamination, developing programs that address those sources, implementing those programs, and evaluation and uh, follow-up. In Beaver Lake, the most likely source of pollutants is the watershed, that is the area that drains into the lake. An example would be runoff from a parking lot, which might have oil from cars or antifreeze. So we have to work with our partners in the watershed to implement programs that protect our lake. The university has been studying Beaver Lake since it was impounded. We did the first studies on Beaver Lake looking at how water quality changed after the reservoir was impounded. Since then, we've been focusing on how land use has impacted water quality of the streams flowing into Beaver Lake. The studies have focused on how converting forest to urban or pasture land has influenced water quality, and it's important to understand how these changes in land use impact water quality for watershed management. You know, it's so important that, that um, with the growth that we've had in Northwest Arkansas that, that, that water, uh, the adequacy of water is, is not an issue and fortunately for the last uh, 50 years it's not been an issue. But our focus really is looking at the numbers overall and then making sure that we're positioned for what's taking place 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Probably one of the things in, in my time on the board has been the focus on uh, source water protection on, uh, from an environmental standpoint. It's not the quality of the product that comes out, but it's the quality of the product that comes in. It's amazing what people will pay for certain things, certain services, uh, uh, cell phones, whatever, and, and when, you, when you look at how little water costs and how little value people place on it. So uh, once you see what's involved in producing water, you have a much better appreciation for, uh, for what the value of it is. Uh, when, when the lake was finished, a number of things happened in Northwest Arkansas and everyone began to think of the infrastructure that was needed and the roads that were envisioned would, would link one end of Northwest Arkansas to the other and the wastewater plants would be needed to be able to, to service the, uh, the cities here. But we wanted to make sure that drinking water clean, and available was put in place so that Northwest Arkansas could grow. When Sam Walton put up the first Walmart store and J.B. Hunt began to run his trucks and the Tyson Corporation began to become a very big player in the protein industry, uh, Beaver Water District was in place, ready to go, helping them grow. 
And as we grew, uh, Beaver Water District grew ahead of us, not catching up, but always being in place so that in fact, we could grow to where we wanted to grow, not where we had to grow because of our limitations. The single most important deliverer of water is Beaver Water District. We appreciate them very much.